we're going to calculate a bunch of summaries of uh, one variable statistics on this data set that I gave you today. Um, I know you asked for a uh, sort of a printed or a, a text version of how to do all these steps, but it's way faster for me to make a video. So we're going to start with that. And of course, you do have your textbook and other sources of information for how to calculate these things. So for just the height value from the survey data that we have, we're going to calculate a bunch of stuff in three ways. One for once for all the responses, once for just the male respondents, and once for female respondents. So I'm going to start by uh, calculating these things uh, for for all respondents. So first, I'm just going to paste in uh, the the values that we're looking for. I just copied those out of the other sheet. So the mean value is the average, and the values that we want are going to be from C2, so column C, row 2, C2 down to uh, C51. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard when I click that, and you can see it's filled in um, this formula C2 colon C51. A lot of you are putting a comma there, which makes a short list of just two items, and it leaves out all the ones in between. So there's our mean, 166.52, and this was in centimeters. Median is the same kind of thing. Median and C2 colon C51. I don't have to use my mouse. And you can see that's 166 and a half. So since these are all integer values, there must be an even number of values here, and it's uh, averaged or found the mean between those two middle values. The last one is mode, and we'll see what happens here. C2 colon C51. 178 is the most commonly occurring value in, uh, in that series. All right, the range. Now, I'm going to add two more items down at the bottom here, which weren't asked for. The uh, minimum and the maximum. These two values are what we'll use to calculate the uh, range. The range is the difference between the largest and smallest values. So we want the min of the given values, C51, uh, and the max of those values equals max C2 to C51. And there we go. So those two values, and you can see the difference between those is 48. But we're not going to type that in. We're going to calculate it. I'm going to use my mouse again. Equals this value, the maximum, minus this value. So my formula is G13 minus G12 because of where I've put everything over here. The range is 48. Okay, the interquartile range, that's the difference between Q1 and Q3. Uh, but I haven't calculated those yet. Let's do that first down here. First quartile equals quartile. Now, read in here, they give you a little example. The data comes first, so that's our, our set of numbers down here, and then the quartile number that we're looking for. So our data is C2 colon uh, C51 comma. The quartile number I want here, the first quartile is 1. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to copy that. C2 to C51, this time I want the third quartile. If I put the number 2 in there, quartile 2, that's the same value as the median value up here. Okay, the interquartile range then, I'm going to use my mouse again, equals third quartile, minus on my keyboard, first quartile. Press enter, it's at 19.25 is the difference between those two quartile values. The semi-interquartile semi range is that value cut in half, so G6 divided by 2, always starting with that equal sign. Variance, that's var, and once again, C2 colon C51. And the standard deviation is STDEV. If it was a population, we do add a P on there too, but we're not. C2 colon C51. All right, so we have all of these um, basic values calculated, including these couple of extras that we used, the min and the max, for this data set. All right, now... Um, we have all of that stuff for the entire set of values. I'm going to rename this sheet to uh, All Results. And we're going to make some new sheets. One here, which will be for uh, male responses. And the other sheet here, which is going to be for female responses. So how do we get only the male responses into, that, into those places? So we're going to kind of ignore those things here for a minute and just focus in on our data itself. I'm going to 
um, select all of this stuff that's in here, but nothing over here. Two ways to do that. One is to use, well, three, I guess. You could use your keyboard, you could use your mouse and click and drag, or you can click anywhere inside this data. As long as you have a blank column uh, around your data, it will stop when you press Control A, it will only select the values that are inside of, of this data set. So Control A on the keyboard, let me just show you again. Click in, inside the middle, press Control A. If I'm clicked somewhere else here, it's going to select a larger data set. Make sure you're inside of the set that you want. Up here is the filter button. If you're using Microsoft Excel, uh, it'll be in the data ribbon or there'll be a sort and filter button on the home ribbon. Turn on the filtering. You can see these little drop downs, little uh, triangles appear here. And I'm going to uh, filter out by gender. I'm going to uncheck female. I'm going to leave male checked. And now you can see the data that I have is just male uh, responses. I'm going to highlight all that. Control C to copy on my keyboard. Let's go to the mail um, uh, sheet, and you can see when I paste, I only get mail responses. There is no filtering turned on here anymore. Uh, let me just uh, resize this a little bit. There we go, lovely. We'll go back to the all results here, and I'm going to switch to the female only filtering. Again, I'm just going to press Control A, copy, go to the female um, sheet. Okay, and now I can do the same, make the same uh, calculations, these median variance and, and all, all these calculations. Oh, you see how there's sort of some values missing here? I've still got my filtering on and some of my rows have been hidden. So I'm just going to select all right here to enable uh, both of these values. And that brings everything back. I can also just turn off filtering right there. And so I'm going to perform the same computations, the same calculations here on these other sheets, the male sheet and the female sheet, and that's going to give me um, uh, th those same values but for just those um, people. Now, another option is to, uh, I mean, not total, but all results, all results here, the male and female. You don't have to be on those sheets to perform those calculations. You can still perform the calculations from any sheet. For example, if I want to do the average for males, I can, I'll use my mouse to show you how it works first. I put the bracket in there, I click on the sheet, and you see my formula sort of follows me along here. What's the average of these values? So I'll just highlight them. That's the male sheet, C2, C23. Close my bracket, press enter, and it brings me back to my first sheet. And you see the formula here? It starts with the word male, and then an exclamation point, and then the cell references from that sheet. The reason it has the word male there is because this is the name of this spreadsheet, this sheet down here, this worksheet that I've created. And I can do the same thing for female. I'll do it once here. Equals average bracket. Click on the female sheet. Choose the values that I want. This one is a little bit longer. It goes down to 20 or row 29. Close bracket and enter. And there's the average or the mean for female. Uh, respondents and you can see here in the formula female exclamation point and then the relevant range that's there you can continue doing the same thing for all of these other values and um, then you've completed the first portion here of the uh, of the assignment now one more uh, thing I'm going to squeeze into this video here finding the Z score and the percentile for each of the values for, e so for each datum, for every single value here. I'm just going to make a new blank column and I'm going to call this one uh, Z-score. And so the Z-score is going to be the difference between this value and the mean divided by the standard deviation. And remember we've talked before about absolute or static references. We're going to need that here. So I want to take this is going to be equal to, I'm going to use brackets, this value here, the x value we're interested in, minus the mean here, close my bracket, I'm going to divide that all by standard deviation, and that'll tell me how many standard deviations away this height value is from the mean height. And you can see it's about a half of a standard deviation, and the negative sign means that it's less than the standard deviation. Now before I fill this down, which if, if I do this it'll break, oh look we broke. Before doing that you have to be careful that as you fill it down 
the only thing that moves, the only cell reference that sort of slides along relative as you fill the formula down, is the C2 value. You don't want these other ones, like H2, you don't want it to shift down and have this uh, purple area here point to value after value after value. So the dollar sign goes in front of, it has to go in front of the 2, so that we don't go to subsequent rows. And here, in the standard deviation, has to go in front of the 9. You can also put it in front of the H's if you want to. That way, if you were to fill things left and right, it wouldn't move either. So now I've got some dollar signs in there so that my cell references stay static. I'm going to grab at the bottom corner, or you can just highlight and then press Control D, and there it's filled down the Z scores for all of my values. Oops. So now you've got the Z score, you've got a whole bunch of values calculated. You can complete the rest for the male and female sheets. And then there's just a little bit more to do on the, uh, on the assignment down here to make some graphs. Thanks. Oh, wait, one more thing. With that uh, percentile is, where is it here? This one, we've got to add that in. Uh, let's do that right here. Um, so percentile. And I'm going to move this over one more. I'm going to just insert a blank column there just so we sp space our data away from this stuff over here. And the percentile, now there is a percentile function, but what that does, you can see here, is it tells you, um, uh, like you put in a, a per, you put in the percentile, like you put in 80% or 72% and it'll give you back the data value at that spot. But we don't, we don't want that. What, what I'm actually looking for is the percent rank for each item, percent rank. So which percentile does it fall into? I see here it returns the percentile rank percentile of a specified value in the data set. So the data set is C2 colon C51 and the value is uh, the specific row that we're on C2 in this case. And so that is a percentage value. I'm just going to scroll down, shift, click to uh, fill that in. Control D will uh, fill those values in. And I'm just going to turn that into a percentage, which is here. There we go. So those are the those are the uh, percentile rankings. Uh, eh, percent percent percentage maybe isn't the best choice, but you can see here, uh, 188 must be the largest value that we have because it's in the hundredth percentile, and uh, it is the largest value we have. I can see it right there. Okay, there we go. Now we're done. Thanks.